We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. Clint Kelly's with us, our malpractice attorney. The number on the screen, 737-7587. Give us a call. We've got some folks to wait through the break. And you know what? Bob jumped in first, and I hear Bob has a good question. So if Bob's right there, we're going to take it. Bob, good morning. What's your question? Good morning. I appreciate you all taking my phone call. Um, the main thing is, like, uh, uh, shouldn't the uh, laws be start being reversed instead of one year and give some more time because mm. uh, they've got all these people on the opioid crisis. I would say the doctors have had us in a sock with uh, opioid distribution. Okay, I, I think Amen, I know where he's Bob. going. Yeah. yeah, and I do. Amen, Bob. You're absolutely right. He's talking about more than a year statute of limitations. He's just talking about, in general, he's giving an example of the opioid crisis, but it, 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 let's broaden it out some. There are so many situations where people, particularly when they've been devastated by malpractice, you know, the injury is preventing them from working or paying medical bills, you know, in some cases, you know, displaced them because they're immobile, they're paralyzed. And they have so many things to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's hard to go hire a lawyer and get involved with an attorney at that moment. Some people simply, you know, th they think, well, I'm going to get better. Mm -hmm. The doctor tells them I'm going to get better. Mm -hmm. And so they don't want to sue. Most people don't. And so they wait and wait and wait. And we've talked about the doctor. Oh, yeah. hey, 12 months, you'll be better come back and see me kind yeah, of thing. covering his butt then. It's just, it's terribly unfair to the patients, and it does nothing really except help doctors and hospitals get cases dismissed. Yep. That, that, that's all it's used for. It's not for some grand purpose of preserving evidence, because nowadays everything's electronic, Nick. There's no need to have to get everything done within a year. And there are other states that do have a two-year statute. I was about to ask you, so is it one in two years nationwide? I yeah. mean, depending on the state, are there any three years or shorter than a year? There are some that are three years. Two years is your typical statute. Okay. But uh, Kentucky's got a one year. Hmm. Uh, there were a lot of states that passed <coughs> tort reform, and part of the tort reform package was included in one-year statute limitations. But you're absolutely right, Bob. There ought to be more time. We've tried to get the legislature to do that. They won't budge. Yeah. All right. Let's go next to uh, <coughs> Deborah. Deborah, good morning. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Hey, how can we help you? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to try to make this really quick fast because it's a long story, but I had severe scoliosis. Uh, I had, uh, I've had nine major back surgeries, uh, three uh, back to back, my first time. Uh, they were, uh, the first one was 26 hours long. Uh, <laughs> That night, I started running a really high temperature, um, ended up with septicemia and MRSA from dirty hardware, and uh, in the end, my left bra popped out, uh, literally an hour after they brought me back in from the OR, so I almost died uh, because I lost so much blood. Um, now, when I went back to the doctor, uh, because my, also my rods were crooked. Uh, I, I have uh, 28 pounds of hardware, so uh, my rods, screws, and everything were crooked. It was horrible. Um, and I uh, had three letters, you know, from the infectious disease doctor and uh, uh, top doctor of Vanderbilt uh, and uh, surgeon, prosthetic surgeon, and uh, one other. Uh, all I'm telling him, you know, you've got to take this marker out of her back. It's killing her. Okay, so Deborah, and, uh, Deborah, Deborah hold on a sec when, now. When all this right, happened? So when did uh, st all of this start for you? How long ago? How long ago? I first found out about my severe scoliosis literally four months after I graduated college. Oh, I mean the surgery. So yeah, the, was, but, but some of these surgeries. We just need to know for timetables. When did you? Oh, get, okay, okay. Um, it's been five years, but uh, since uh, my last, things. no, it's been three years since my last one, but I did know that about all this stuff, you know. Uh, when did you find you out know, about it? Yeah. Uh, this year. Okay. Let me let me talk. About okay, hang on. Quick. Listen up here. I'll let yeah. Clint because maybe we can delve through it without sitting through yeah. the whole long thing because th you said it's a long story. I'm glad Deborah called in because there's one other aspect of the statute of limitations we don't normally talk about, Nick, which is what's called the statute of repose, mm -hmm. R E P O S E. It is an additional layer of protection for the doctors or hospitals, and it's this: if you try to bring a claim more than three years outside the date of the negligent act 
you're barred. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. The only exception is fraudulent concealment. In other words, where the doctor hides from something you. from you or puts an object in <clears throat> your body and doesn't tell you. Okay. So the problem with Deborah's situation is even if it's been three years or more than three years since the negligent act, if you just happen to find out, let's say Deborah just found out yesterday mm -hmm. that the surgery was mishandled or the product that was put in her body was defective, and she might have a products liability case, but the negligence aspect of it, if it's more than three years, she's barred. And a lot of people don't understand that, and it's unfair, particularly when they have children. Mm -hmm. Because there are children who may be the victims of birth trauma, something was done wrong during their delivery, uh, or perhaps something was done in terms of a, a vaccine, or they, something was mishandled when they were children. They may not know the effects of it until they were five, six, seven, or eight. They come to me and say, what can you do about it? I say, there's nothing because it's been more than three years. The three years, because you've said before, if it's, say, in Tennessee, you find out what went wrong, say, after two years, even though statute of limitations is one from thing, but if it was right. when you find out, Correct. and it's only been two years, then maybe you still have a case. That's an exception outside the one-year statute. But once it's three, all bets are That's off. Absolutely Everything's right. off. That's absolutely right. So, Going back to what Bob yeah. said earlier, we've tried to get the legislature to change that rule, particularly for children or people like Deborah. It won't budge. Okay, now, if Deborah can say that, okay, and she has, she just found out this year, the last surgery was three years ago, you're right, so that's it. Unless she's had unless other it's, medical unless treatments Unless within since. the three years, say, for example, she found out about this two years and nine months after yeah. her surgery, she still would have an opportunity to investigate the claim, but she'd have to give notice within the next few months before the three years runs out. Yeah. And you're running against the clock in that situation, and it's, it's just <clears throat> unfortunate. I'll tell you this, someone who's had nine back surgeries like she has, you're set up for all kinds of complications. I know, and that's what I was going to say. We don't know all her situation, and very well, something bad could have been done to her, yeah. you know, wrong. But you know, she talks about getting the infection and dirty. Well, infections happen sometimes, even with the typical standard of care in the hospital. It's just the nature of the beast, right? Yeah, and she's going to have a long road ahead of her, neck of all kinds yeah, of complications. Yeah, nine back surgeries. I really feel for her, but yeah, she, that, that comes with problems anyway. Scoliosis. Yeah, and doctor. Yeah, that's the curvature of the spine, yeah. and that's a hard thing. Yeah. All right, let's see. We'll uh, squeeze Joe in, I think. Joe. Uh, oh, is it Joe? Oh, let's see. Wait. Uh, there we go. Good morning, Joe. Go ahead. Hi, Joe. Okay, Nick. Uh, I know Mr. Kelly knows about this. <clears throat> Back to the gowns, hospital gowns again. Yeah. Oh, those come from China. <laughs> That's where they're buying them from. Some of them, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. That tells you a little bit right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. They are cutting corners everywhere in the medical field is. <clears throat> Second thing is, you go to the emergency room, you call about any any doctor or whatever, they'll say, if this is an emergency, go to the emergency room. Well, <clears throat> you're expecting to get uh, some great care in the emergency room. Come to find out if when you're in the emergency room, you're treated by a physician assistant or maybe a mm -hmm. nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. Then if you got insurance, you come to find out that maybe he doesn't take your insurance. The sure. hospital, the emergency room will take it, but the doctor that treats you don't take it. Mm -hmm. the third thing is this has helicopter ride this lady. Yeah, I was going to bring it up. I'll mention it to you. Okay. Fifty, fifty, total of fifty-four thousand dollars that they charged this people, and she didn't have any insurance. She was at Vanderbilt for two days and died. Now, hmm. that's kind of a ridiculous figure for, for an ambulance ride from an adjoining hmm. county for fifty-two, fifty-four thousand dollars. I yeah, love Joe. Joe always brings Joe, so much to the table. It's really good. Joe yeah. knows his stuff. All right, yeah. so that case was one that uh, we reported. Uh, Chris Conti's been doing a lot of stories on the high cost of medical care, the hospitals closing, and a lot of these patients that are suffering because they get these outrageous bills they can't pay off. Man, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, obviously when this woman was in a crisis, they had that life flight her and the helicopter ride turned out to be $50,000 after she died and the family got the bill. I'm telling you what, unless I am out and dying, I'm not allowing anyone to call an ambulance to take me somewhere. My wife's driving me. I'm not flying there if I can get there on there. Because unless it's life-threatening and I'm about to die, someone's paying for that. And guess what? It's going to end up being me. We're going to get this crazy bill. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I, you know, Oh, can we call an ambulance for you because I get rear-ended and I have a sore neck? No, I'll get there myself, thanks. Because I don't want to pay $5,000 for a ride to the hospital in an ambulance. Sorry, ain't doing it. But the average Joe gets picked up after a wreck. They get thrown. They don't think at that time. 
about it. I guess I wouldn't either. Then later, someone pays the piper. Yeah. That's I, and I know that's outside malpractice, but I know you have thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I do. I have a very strong opinion about it, but I'm not going to give it because I don't <laughs> handle that kind of law. <laughs> Although uh, I would tell you is just right. from, from a, uh, a citizen looking at that situation, uh, just one word is outrageous. Yes. This poor outrageous. family. The, the, the woman dies, $55,000. Yeah. And you wonder why people have problems with hospitals these days, which harkens back to what Joe mentioned yeah. about the emergency room. Right. Did you uh, hear about about the bill that's being uh, proposed in the legislature where they're trying to lessen the supervision or the restrictions on nurse practitioners by physicians. I heard something about that. Where they There is a bill that is going to, if it passes, is going to substantially, I don't think it's going to be eliminate, but will substantially minimize the amount of supervision that a physician will have over a nurse practitioner. Now, the plus side of that argument is if you lessen the supervision, practitioners will be given more authority and more ability to do work in rural areas where you can get more care. That's the idea, okay. allegedly. The downside of it is you're dumbing down medicine because if you don't have nurse practitioners that are being properly supervised by doctors who you know, by law and by training are superior in terms of expertise and their ability to handle patients. If you're not supervising that nurse practitioner closely, then that nurse practitioner is not gonna have the benefit mm -hmm. of that superior expertise or that person looking over their shoulder to make sure everything's being done properly. Right. And that will lead, I'm telling you, that's going to lead to more malpractice yep. cases. And the people don't, when you go to the emergency room and you need help, and someone comes to give you care, the first thing you're not thinking about is, hey man, yeah. or hey lady, are you a nurse practitioner, <laughs> as opposed to a doctor? You just want care. You don't think about it. Yeah. And what's going to happen in these situations is there going to be care that's going to be provided. People are going to think it was provided by a doctor. Screw ups are going to happen. They're going to go back and find out, nuh-uh, it was a nurse practitioner. I've been in situations, as we go to the break, exactly what you said, where I thought, I thought I was with the doctor. And it was only after, as we started talking, you know me, I talk a lot, and, I, and not, I don't think they were deliberately lying or trying not to let me know that, but they, she came off as the doctor. And, and then I, later I only found out she was the nurse practitioner working in concert with the doctor who had looked at my file, and I got good care, so I didn't have a problem. But the way it came off to me and the way it was presented, I thought, she behaved like the doctor and acted like the doctor. Well, what does that this. mean, Nick? And I only found out later, and I kind of walked out of the scratch in my head. I'm like, well, who's my doctor and who's not? And did she really know what was going on? And like I said, I got good care, but it kind of bothered me. Let me say this, nurse, nurse practitioners are great. They're yeah. extremely helpful in the line of fire, so to speak, and a lot of them are very, very good at what they yeah. do. They need to be supervised by medical doctors, just like physician assistants need to be supervised by medical doctors. There's a reason for supervision. Yeah, and I agree with you, and she probably was. I just think it's for the patient's right to know. Mm -hmm. It should say, nurse practitioner here or doctor here. I don't want them all looking the same, wearing the same smock, and you don't know which is which. I got We'll tell if you want to wait till the yeah, break. Yeah, let's I'll, take I'll a take break. You, okay. And uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. I want to hear that. We've got more calls coming in as well. Give us a ring, 737-7587. Comments, questions for the, the lawyer here right after this.